Hello cuties and welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. So today's video is going to be a bit different from the usual videos on my channel. Um, but I really wanted to talk about this because um, it's been something that I've been struggling with quite a bit this week. Um, and also because I had already been planning to be a bit more open about like my mental struggles online. Um, because I think it can always be helpful to have as many voices as possible on these topics because it always helps me to listen to different people and to find experiences from different people that I can relate to so I feel a bit less alone. Um, so yeah, if I can contribute to that even a little bit then I would really like to do so. Um, so this video is on uh, four tips to deal with holiday stress. Um, as a person with autism, uh, I did title the video for people who also have autism or are um, sensitive to overstimulation, but I know the holidays can be a stressful time for anyone, whether you're neuronormal, neurodivergent, or you have any other diagnosis. Um, yeah, I know it can be stressful anyway, so I think these tips can be helpful for anyone. And it's also possible that these tips are not helpful at all. Uh, but yeah, maybe I can just help somebody, that would be nice. Um, it's not like any magical life-changing tips, it's just small mindset shifts that have helped me. Um, also, I may be looking down a few times because I have my laptop here with my notes. Um, so, yeah, just so you know. <laughs> Oh yeah, and another thing I wanted to mention is that these tips are more for changing your mindset in advance of the holidays. This is not really for dealing with overstimulation during holiday social events. Um, but if you would like me to do a video on dealing with overstimulation during social events, then um, I could also try to do that. Um, I have been sensitive to like. Uh, stimulation, like what do you call it in English? In Dutch, it's prikkels, um, like sensory stuff, um, like sound and um, vision, and um, yeah, just I easily get stressed and overstimulated in like busy environments. Um, so, yeah. I could also do a video on that if you want me to. If you think it would be interesting, then please let me know in the comments and I might do that too. But yeah, this is for uh, like little mindset shifts to be a bit kinder to yourself uh, in advance of the holidays. Um, also, uh, about the autism part, um, I have been diagnosed with autism five years ago. Uh, I have not talked about this explicitly on my channel, but... Uh, I thought it would be useful to um, yeah to tell you about it now because um, yeah like I said different voices can always help be relatable um, but just because my autism for me means that I easily get overstimulated and that I have struggles with social events um, doesn't mean that that's the same for everyone um, autism is actually very different in different people, um, so I can really only speak from my experience. Um, but I do feel like um, having difficulty with social events and uh, being sensitive to uh, sensory overstimulation is quite a general thing that many uh, artists, if that's a word in English, share. Um. Okay, so now let's just jump right into the tips. Um, so I designed it as like four rules that can um, replace uh, some other 
rules that I used to have in my head because I actually came up with this video while I was writing in my diary um, about my holiday stress and whenever I write in my diary I always try to um, talk myself up so um, like I in the end I always write something positive <laughs> Um, so I was able to like replace my negative thoughts with positive ones. So my first new holiday rule would be to check in with myself and honor my limits. Um, and this would be to replace my previous thought of um, needing to be at every family or friend's Christmas event. Um, and to me, uh, it often feels like I have no choice but to go to every Christmas event um, because everyone is making a really big deal out of family uh, during Christmas. Um, but if you're a person who struggles with overstimulation and who finds it difficult to have many social events, uh, then it can be hard to have like three dinners and two breakfasts in three days, you know, with lots of people and different family members. Uh, especially if you come from mixed families. Uh, for example, my boyfriend's family is separated, so we have two uh, events at his house. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's a lot and it can also involve a lot of traveling, which can also be very exhausting. So. I was thinking to myself, like, um, I would never say yes to doing so many social events in so little time whenever it's not Christmas. Like, any other time of year, I would be aware that that is not feasible for me, that is unrealistic. But then, during Christmas, I'm suddenly like, I have to do that. But I'm like, it's not like there's some magic... Christmas spirit that suddenly turns off my autism and my um, sensitivity to overstimulation and like my social anxiety. It's not like that's magically, magically gone for three days. It's not like we get a break out of... Um, it's not like we get a break of like struggling with these things. So why would that be an exception to what you are usually capable of doing? Um, so I realized that it was quite unrealistic to ask this of myself. Um, so I decided instead of forcing myself to be at every event, um, I will just during the three Christmas days, because we have Christmas Eve and then uh, Christmas Day and Boxing Day, um, and we have events on all of those days. Um, so instead, during all of these days, I would check in with myself regularly see how I'm doing, see if I'm still okay. And if I'm not okay, I'm just gonna take a break. I'm gonna like go for a walk with my dog. Or if I'm like really not okay and I need to stay home for that evening and I cannot go to this dinner, then I'm sorry, but I'm going to cancel, you know? Because I'm not gonna let it take too much out of me anymore and like drive me to a destructive coping mechanisms anymore because it's that's just not worth it to me um, and I don't think my family would want me to uh, struggle so badly from feeling like I have to be with them because like it's still it's supposed to be fun you know so it's sh you shouldn't be forcing yourself too much um, and also I haven't actually told my family yet um, well, I have told my family, but I haven't told my boyfriend's family yet um, about like my mental issues. Um, so they just assume that I'm normal and just cancel a lot. And that makes me feel kind of rude because if I was able to go, I would never cancel, you know. The only reason that I cancel is when I am physically unable to go. Um, so I think I'm finally going to tell them like how everything is in my brain. <laughs> so maybe they will understand a bit better when I'm not able to be there sometimes. So I think that can also be a tip that really helps um, to just be open. Um, I know it can be hard, but um, it really creates more understanding in most cases. Okay, and then my second tip. Um, 
is that New Year's resolutions are just as effective when you write them in February. So um, this rule would replace, I need to finish my New Year's resolutions on top of everything else that I need to finish before the end of the year. For me, December, or actually I think for most people, December is quite a stressful period because it feels like the end of the year. <laughs> okay, well it is the end of the year, but it feels like it actually means something. But it's just a social construct. Like, we decided that it's the end of the year and that certain things need to be finished before the end of the year. But the only reason that things need to be finished before the 31st of December is because we decided that. So can't we then also decide that we are not going to do that anymore? Um, well, I think we can. <laughs> so um, yeah, I decided to take something off of my list and um, if I feel like I don't have time to write my New Year's re resolutions before the end of December, then that's fine, I'm just gonna write them another time, you know? Um, because, for example, for me, there are some things I need to finish for my studies, um, and there's some uh, pressures that I put on myself, for example, filming this video and getting it out before Christmas. Um, and like writing Christmas cards and um, well writing my New Year's resolutions uh, there's just a lot of things that I'm like this has to be done before the end of December and also I put a lot of pressure on myself to make the most out of December because it's like the holiday month there are so many fun events and I try to like cramp all the fun events into one um, month and actually into two weeks because that's the Christmas holidays like that we're off of school so um, yeah but it really makes no sense that I'm trying to cramp all the funny events into two weeks it would be way more enjoyable for me probably if I like scheduled a fun event like every other week you know if I just spread it out over the entire winter and then it might also help me feel better during winter because my mood is like quite a bit affected by like the darkness outside and like the gray weather and the clouds so I think it would actually be twice as good for me if I scheduled things over the entire duration of the winter and if I didn't put too much pressure on myself in December so I think that could really help and it's a bit of a tangent but that also goes for New Year's resolutions. You can just decide to scrap it off of your list for December and put it on another list. Like try to finish them before February and then you have still you still have ten months to work on them. So I think you're gonna be fine. <laughs> and I also think that another advantage of not forcing yourself to do them in December when you're actually too busy um, is that when you do them during a less stressful time uh, it will give you more time to think them through so you can have better resolutions like um, they might be more realistic and um, yeah, you can just give them some more thought if you do it during a time that you can actually put some thought and attention into them rather than just doing it for the sake of doing it but not making them as realistic as they could be. And then my third tip is I will make sure to tell my loved ones how much they mean to me whenever I have the mental capacity to express that instead of I need to send meaningful Christmas cards and buy the best gifts for everyone I know. Um, I feel like many people uh, feel the pressure to express their love during Christmas and to buy the best gifts and to be very thoughtful and to send Christmas cards and to make them like very meaningful and very pretty and that's really nice and I love that about Christmas I love that it um, is a reminder to cherish your family and your loved ones and your friends um, but also I think that it can be too much at once like I said for me uh, five social events in three days just because it's Christmas is just really too much and there are way more meaningful ways for me to express how much my loved ones mean to me than 
to completely exhaust myself during Christmas and not even really enjoy it because I feel like my loved ones deserve my full attention and I'm not going to be able to give that to them if I'm not honoring my limits and if I'm just forcing myself. Um, so yeah, I think it's better to uh, not put so much pressure on yourself to buy the most beautiful gifts and to write the most meaningful Christmas cards and just not be like, okay, I need to tell everyone how much they mean to me at Christmas or my chance will be over and I need to wait a year. That's not what it's like. You can also tell them in January or February or March or whenever. I think any time of year is a good moment to express your love and it's fine if you don't do it at Christmas. Like You can let Christmas be a reminder that you're gonna do it at some point when you have the mental space to do it. But if that moment is not literally at Christmas, then that's okay. You don't need to do it like within those three days. You have, you have time and you can give yourself time. Um, and then my fourth and last tip is uh, that thoughtful, small or DIY gifts are at least as meaningful as big expensive ones. Instead of, I need to spend every last penny on Christmas gifts. So, um, as a student on a very limited budget, as I'm currently unable to work next to my studies because of my mental health stuff that's going on, um, I can definitely relate to the stressors of having to buy enough beautiful gifts. Um, so. I just had to come to terms with the fact that I cannot spend a lot of money on gifts because I literally do not have the money. Um, because like rents and food and groceries. Um, so yeah, there was no other option for me than to accept that DIY gifts are also very meaningful. And um, like for example this Christmas I made a phone case for my boyfriend. Um, with like photos of us and photos of Panda um, and I did that two years ago as well and he just found it so meaningful and like anytime someone asks him like uh, what does your dog look like he's like look at my phone case and every time someone asks about me he's like here's my girlfriend she's on my phone case <laughs> so yeah um, I think that was quite a successful gift so yeah, you can definitely make very meaningful gifts that don't have to cost a lot. I personally really like photo gifts, so like you can make a photo calendar, or like I said, a phone case, or a mug, or there are so many things that you can put photos on. Um, and that's just a very meaningful gift if it reminds them of like a nice memory you have together. And if you then even add like a thoughtful letter about how much they mean to you, um, if you have the mental space to write that, like, refer back to my last point. Um, then I think that's a very beautiful gift and you do not need to feel bad about it. And I think it can be more meaningful because then you are actually thinking about the connection that you have with that person rather than just following what consumerism tells you that would be a good gift, you know? It's like, this is a good gift for you, it's personal. It's not like, this will be a good gift for anyone because I spend a lot of money on it and big corporations told me to buy it, you know? So I definitely think it can be more beautiful than spending a lot of money. Um, so yeah, those were my five tips on surviving holiday stress. Um, this video was really rambly and it was a bit of an experiment for me. Um, I hope this video helped in some way that maybe you can, um, if you are as self-critical as me, then maybe this video has helped you to be a bit more mild to yourself and to give yourself some space to breathe. Um, I really hope you can be kind to yourself this Christmas. Um, and yeah, just let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on how to deal with overstimulation during social events. If you think that would be helpful, I can make that too. Um, it won't be out before Christmas because this video is hopefully going up 
on the day of Christmas Eve. But I can still do it for like other moments. Um, also, I would like to make more videos on autism in general and like tips. So if you would like that, let me know as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will be kind to yourself. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. <laughs> bye bye.